Hey, it's Ray and Mike, and we got some great information for you. Yeah, we just wanted to remind you about the fundraiser for the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66, which is taking place on October 27th at the Renaissance Center in downtown Joliet. You'll be able to get tickets at Cadillac Groove Shows. Uh, If you see Mike or myself somewhere, we'll have tickets. You can get them at the museum. Uh, They're only $5. Also, at CadillacGroove.com, you will be able to to purchase them online as well. Very good. They're going to cost you $5 a ticket. There's going to be a $10 cover charge to get in the day of the event. And for your $10, we will give you two more additional tickets, as well as some Cadillac Groove swag. And the lucky grand prize winner will win the band Cadillac Groove. And winner must must be present to win. And, so remember that. And Cadillac Groove will play for whatever event it is that you would like for us to play for. You know, conditions do apply. That's true. We do so have to get out that. there and get your tickets right away. Coming to you from the studios at the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66, it's the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. Rock and roll Chicago. Hey, everybody, it's Ray the Roadie. And this is Hollywood Mike. I am ecstatic. Ray, how are you doing? I'm <laughs> I'm full of static electricity, too. Look at my hair. <laughs> what, the, what the heck happened there? I don't know. It's just too much static electricity. You're just walking around and your hair just decided to go. Phew. Yeah, just, just, it's like I got my hand on one of them balls. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is a family program. Oh, not those. <laughs> I mean, but they're yours. Yeah, that's I mean, true. You, it's not like you got your hands on his balls. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. Keep your hands on the table, Willie. <laughs> yeah, okay. No yeah, yeah, we don't want to see So this why are all. you ecstatic? Because we've got this band in the studio here tonight. Well, at least... Uh, two members of this band here in the studio tonight. They're called Shooter. Yes, they are. That's right. They brought their fans with them. They did. Why do I, why do all our guests only have a bunch of guys? Clapping? I don't know. It's, it's all it is. It's always <laughs> they got, dudes. Yeah, they always got dudes. No chicks. Is. Yeah, you guys work. Got to work on your female uh, following. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's all right. No. Let's welcome Shooter. How you guys doing? Awesome. Doing good. Yeah, I, doing good. I got to start it off by saying you have a fan. <laughs> You have a Thank fan. You. you absolutely do. I looked you guys up a few days ago and, you know, you go to the internet stuff and everything. And, um, you know, I saw you guys doing covers and, and everything. And then Ray sent me the link this morning, uh, to the, where I got your albums, right? You guys got a few albums. Wasn't it like four of them you, you guys put out over the years? We put out, uh, our first one in, God, early nineties, gone full circle. Yeah. And then, um, in 2016, regrouped, better studio. Right better tracking and revised the the gone full circle album right 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 and uh but yeah after 44 years you get a few tunked under your belt you know yeah well before we get too far along before we do let's uh tell everybody who we're talking to here yeah why don't you introduce introduce yourselves go ahead my name is jr uh call me the bounty hunter i'm lead singer and front man uh for shooter all right. And now I'm Willie. I'm the guitar player. One of the guitar players, I should say. All right. All right. Anything else? Just, just guitar or multi-instrumentalist? Uh, no, just just guitar. Yeah. Uh, backup vocals. Yeah. Some, yeah well, there you go. Vocals. When there he feels go. foggy, he leaps. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Give me a couple shots. And, and, and JR, you are the lead singer. And I didn't see you on any videos or anything playing any, any instruments. So you are the true front man. Of the I am the true front man. I can't pick my nose without it. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> that's why these guys get the big bucks. Yeah, that's you know? right. Yeah. I get all the women, but they get the big bucks. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, don't demonstrate the nose part, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll just, I'll just believe. I'll just take that's it. Right. Take it on yeah. that. So, so I, so I take it. You started this whole thing. For, you said 44 years ago, 44 years ago, wow. 81. We started in the basement. With uh, Steve Kelly, he is still with me, as a matter of fact. He's my lead and sly player. Um, Denny Davis and a couple other guys. But since uh, Steve's been with me since 81, Willie came on with me in like 90. Okay. Um, Our bass player was unfortunately killed a few years ago in a car accident. Oh, wow. So uh, drummers and bass players... <laughs> Come yeah, and go, to, but my guitar couple. players are always with me. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> but that's good. no, we've uh, managed to keep it together, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's just unbelievable. The last two, three years, mm-hmm. 
10, 12 shows a month. I mean, they're killing wow. us. Wow. 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 Yeah. So, so who are your current bass player and drummer? Uh, the bass player, his name is uh, Rick Prather. He's okay. out of Wynn, Arkansas. Okay. And uh, me and him actually started playing together in junior high okay. in 74. Hey, he's not commuting from Arkansas. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's he good. filled in during uh, my other bass guitar player got COVID. He came in and filled in okay. and then stuck with me. Right, uh, right. He's vocals too, really good vocalist. All right. And then Ken Ward, young guy, mm-hmm. uh, joined us two yeah, seasons ago. ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He didn't even know who Molly Hatchet was when he joined <laughs> <Wow>. us. <laughs> hey. So, so if he didn't know who Molly Hatchet was, if he didn't know the style of music or the, you know, the bands that most people would listen to, then what was it about him that, that said, well, you're going to be our bass player, regardless of whether or not, you know, Southern rock or not. Oh, Ricky's known it. Me and Ricky have known it forever. Kenny, okay. the drummer. Right. Um, he's a jazz, was a teacher. Okay. Jazz player. Drum teacher. Gotcha. Played in other bands and stuff. And he charts everything. Okay. Okay. But he's just a solid drummer. I mean, that's what we liked about him. I mean, he just, yeah. So maybe I'm confused. Which is the one that said you, he never heard of Molly Hatchet? The drummer. drummer. The drummer. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So I got a little confused. Okay. 39, maybe, or something like that. (laughs) Young pup of the band. Yeah. Young guy. Just a baby. Yeah. Right, Right. Right. Yeah. So, but, uh, I mean, he stepped right up, man. The guy is, he's awesome. I, I hope he don't hear this till August. It's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard gonna, enough if I tell him he's good. It's going to be asking you for more pay. Yeah, yeah. Well, your wish is my command because y- y- this isn't coming out until sometime in August. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> I'll probably have a new drummer by then. You yeah, never know. know. Our listeners know that everything is pre-recorded because we've made, <laughs> we've made that mistake many times. We could have a blooper show about how many times we talk about mm-hmm. today and in races, something like, what do you mean it's raining today? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can't. It's snowing. <laughs> yeah, it's snowing. Yeah, it's been it's been months ago. Yeah, yeah. this will be out August twenty seventh. Right, right. So it's about the musicianship. Then is what it came down to. Is like, yeah, you know, we don't care if you've heard of the style before. If you can pull it off, you can do it. No, nah, no. He's uh, I. I've been blessed, man. I tell you, I. As far as guitar players, I put my guys up against any, anybody, and and even Ken and. Rick only being with us for right. a short time, but, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I don't know. We do what we do. We don't know how we do it, but it, it, it works you, every you show. You yeah. yeah. Three people, 3000 people, they get the same show. Right, right, right. Now you were originally from Arkansas. Yeah. You are. Uh, I was born and raised down in Arkansas. All right. And, uh, been a little bit every place, you know, mm-hmm. what brought you to the Chicago area? Uh, I got back here from Texas uh, about 11, 12 years ago mm-hmm. uh, to do uh, a benefit. And the next thing I know, that was, what, 12 years ago? And right. we haven't missed a weekend yet. Even yeah. during COVID, if they put up a snow fence, we right. were there playing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah still- there was some bars that just still stayed open and wanted to have bands. And yeah. 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 yeah no, there were. It was still America in a few places. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So did you actually start this band in Arkansas? Or did you start this band here in the Chicago area? In uh, the DeKalb area. The DeKalb area. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow. So so you went from Arkansas by way of Texas. <laughs> I went from <laughs> Arkansas by way of Ellen. Now I'm going to catch hell for this. Okay. Because I can't not say it like this. Out of Arkansas to Illinois. Okay. Illinois. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, exactly right. And, and you can you can take home one of those lovely <laughs> t-shirts that say Illinois right there. Does it say I L L the noise? It does. It's right behind it you. Does, you, can yeah. look, you can look through the glass right there. there. It's, you a, go. it's Abraham Lincoln with headphones awesome. on and it says Illinois. Well, Perfect. I'll I'll be leaving with one of them. I'll wear it Saturday at our show. <laughs> That's right. That's okay. Yeah. You can say Illinois if I'm allowed to say Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care. You can call it Texas if you want to. Yeah. That's where I came from from getting here. That's right. I just call it Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. I get that a lot too. You know, Texas is actually a thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's usually synonymous with a badonkadonk. Oh, yeah. 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 (laughs) Okay. All right. So you put the whole thing together then. So I don't need to, well, maybe I do need to ask because a lot of times just because you're playing Southern rock doesn't mean that your influences are all Southern rock. Actually, I started singing uh, when I was about seven. Cranking a RCA Victrola. Wow. 
doing Lesser Flat, Earl Scruggs, Hank right. Sr. And that's the kind of music I grew up with. That's what I was getting at. Let's mm-hmm. talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, uh, I just turned 70 and I'm 22. Right. 18 hours a month. Right, right. You know? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Feels good, huh? Oh, it's uh, there's nothing better. Now, nothing did you better. did you have uh did you have another profession that you maybe retired from and then started doing music full time, or did or did you always just try to make it as a musician? I owned a construction company. Okay, all I right. Bu- I built Super WalMarts and Sam's Clubs and subdivisions and Taco Bells and anything <laughs> that needed to get built or need utilities. That's yeah. I did that. Right, right, so right. Retired Teamster and operator. Uh huh. Now. Build classic cars and play rock and roll. Excellent. It's a nice. Hard life. Man. <laughs> Very hard. I think we're cut from the same cloth. <laughs> mm-hmm. Interesting. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. I got so, a little shop called Bounty Hunter Classics. Okay. Where's yeah. that located? Uh Maple Park, Illinois. Maple Park, Illinois. Okay. Yeah. Wow, we'll yeah. have to check that out too. Yeah. I'll have to contact the owner, see if he wants to do a sponsorship <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. put a little 15 second spot every now and then. Yeah, tell yeah. me to we'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. If you building, want a car, uh, yeah. track them down. Building, <laughs> build, you're, you're building custom. Are, are you restoring cars or are you building custom hot rods? Restoring cars. Restoring them. What I do is I go out and if somebody's looking for a car, I'll find it for them, get it transported back, negotiate the deals. Mm-hmm. But then I always keep two or three in my shop that I build and sell as I'm going along right. to keep the lights on. Right. Right. So it's kind of a, a hobby. And once a year I'll make a dollar. So, you know, that's what this podcast is about. You know, I tell people this all the time. We've had people in here and they're here to, you know, we start talking about the band and for the next 30 minutes, we start doing something like talking about fishing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> p- you know, people, if they want to see you as a band and the whole, they can go see you. Sure. But your fans want to know who you are. You know, the, the side that they don't get to see all the time. And that is very interesting. So, so, if, and, I mean, it doesn't matter the car. So if I told you, like, I am not, I'm, I'm not just pulling this out of the air. If I told you I wanted to find a 1971 Buick LeSabre, you could find it and restore it for me. And I could ask you when you wanted it and how far you wanted it restored. Wow. So most of the people are looking for a project they can finish. Right. I don't know. when I'm like the poor man's gas monkey. Okay. Right. You know, right. I go and find that ten, twelve thousand dollar car that you can throw five or ten in it and right. build it yourself over it uh, a year, couple years or whatever, or right. drive it and build it as you're doing it. Right. You know, just I just want to see the old steel on the road, man. Just like yeah. old rock and roll. Yeah. 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 You yeah. can't let it can't let it rust away. Right. Right. No, I had my first my first car was a 1971. Uh, Buick LeSabre. Oh, nice. Big boat of a car. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They Big boat of a car. I don't even think it would fit in my current garage because I don't have, I don't have an extra. Probably not. I don't have a deep, I don't have a deep garage yeah. and stuff, but I've always thought I'm going to get one back because I had to get rid of it because I was commuting for quite, you know, you know, about an hour every morning and rush hour traffic to go back and forth, you know, to, you know, between college because I lived at home and that thing got like, Nine miles to the gallon. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the gas was a quarter a gallon yeah. back then too. Yeah. But, exactly. but still, yeah, but but still, you know, back then it was a lot of money. I always said I'm going to get one back again, and I don't want I don't want to hot rod it. I just want it, you know, so you can drive it again. Yeah, yeah and back then you can look on the street and look at the cars. Just looking at you, you know what it was. Yeah, right. it was a Buick, it's a little Saber, it's a seventy-one. You, you could tell them every car; you could tell them apart. You oh, know yeah. exactly what it was. You, oh, that's an Impala, but that's a sixty-three because it's sixty-two. Had this on there or something. Nowadays, everyone looks the same. Yep. <laughs> Cookie cutter. Yep. Uh, Cookie cutter. Exactly. Yep. And you probably don't know, but you you've seen my truck. You know my yep. my truck is almost you know this you know this color blue. It's that metallic electric blue. Well, that was the color of my Buick. So when I oh, wow. so when I bought my yeah. truck, that's the reason why I was cool. looking for that color in the truck. I wanted mm-hmm. that color back again. But that's that's interesting. That was a little diversion right there, but that's where's you said the shops in Maple Park, huh? Yeah. All yeah. right. That's neat. Yeah. That's neat. I just did the same thing with a, well, I, uh, I was introduced to a, a gentleman that worked for Harley Davidson for many, many, many years. And when I say worked for them, I don't mean he was, I mean, he wasn't wrenching for him. He actually designed some of the components oh. of their motors and everything. And, uh, my father-in-law, uh, when he passed away, left a 1987 Dyna lowrider to my nephew. And my nephew is a, a pro bass fisherman. He decided he didn't want the motorcycle. He was more into boats and doing his bass fishing and stuff. So, um, 
it had been sitting in my garage for years. And now my son is now 22 years old. And he's like, I wanted to ride. So I found this guy and he restored that that motorcycle oh, for me. So okay. my son's riding his grandfather's 87 Dyna Lowrider. Yeah, that's is, cool. <laughs> which, is re- which is really cool. So <laughs> I can talk cars and motorcycles and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, he's going... Uh, I guess I just came to play one song. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm good. That's all right. That's all right. We got Willie over here, everybody. How you That's doing? That's right. Willie? He's still How here. You doing? Yeah. yeah. Willie's a Bears fan. Yeah, I got my Bears hat on. Yeah. So, so nine days till draft. Well. <laughs> By the by, the time you hear this, it's already over. The with. draft is but, over. Yeah, that's yeah, right. The so, draft's coming up. So, are you, were you a Fields guy? Oh uh, yeah, I was kind of a little disappointed, I guess, that they got rid of him. But I mean, they got definitely got a good quarterback. So we'll see what happens. But yeah. it's just the whole, you know, got to start all over again. But you know what? I I like Fields too. Yeah. You know, but the way I looked at it, they got a completely new offensive uh, yeah, coaching staff. Sure. So no matter who is there, they got to learn a whole new, yeah, no, a true. whole new uh, way yeah. of doing it. So right. whether it was Fields or this new guy, they got to learn it. So yep. yeah, yeah. I guess I just thought Fields showed so much potential in the way of he wanted to learn. Yep. And yeah, he was and exactly. He, I mean, I mean. You don't run your ass off the way he ran his yeah. ass off if yep, he right. didn't care. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, he right. put himself into positions to get hit the way he was getting hit yep. if you didn't care. And sure. I just thought he had a lot of heart. And that was that's kind of why I was disappointed that they got rid of yeah. him. But mm-hmm. We'll we'll see we'll who see they what end happens. up with. Yeah, see, yeah, what we'll see what, who they end up with. You know, you hear a lot of stuff about the guys that they're choosing between and everything, but yep. we'll see what happens. So yeah. so tell us a little bit about the music. Let me let me can I give you my impression of the music and tell me if I'm if I'm dead yeah. on? Yeah, yeah. I listened to uh a lot of your songs today, probably. I know you sent over about a 12 or so, and I listened to a lot of them. And man, I definitely heard the Molly Hatchet in it. I almost well, That's heard, it. That's yeah. him, man. That's his voice. I mean, he's just yeah. got that rough voice. Yeah. But not only that, you know, the, the thing that always distinguished mm. Molly Hatchet from other bands of that age and genre, like, like Leonard Skinner, yeah. right? You yeah. know, everybody's going to compare them to Leonard Skinner, right? Sure. Or Charlie Daniels and bands like that. And uh, is they seem to play... A, Man, they just had a little more. Oomph they were it. the metal of Southern rock. That's a, thank you. Yeah, that was were. exactly it. Southern was rock exactly metal. It. There was some of the, some yeah, of your songs. Some yeah. of your songs sounded like almost like Southern speed metal, is what it was, and I loved it. That's Willie the Plane <laughs> 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 playing okay. a lot of bands, a lot of metal back in the day. Yeah. So yeah, it was. Uh, was it? Uh, 12 Rock and Roll. Was that the name of the song? Is that what it's called? Uh, no, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. I've got a, the one that I'm looking at right there. Second one. Rock and Roll Party. Rock and Roll Party. That's what it is. Oh, it's, man. It's where do you find all those songs? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. That was awesome. Rock and Roll Party. And that was just like speed metal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Got all about that song. <laughs> <laughs> also, you're sending us stuff you can't, we can't even talk about. Oh, <laughs> we're reviving it all. Yeah, that one. Uh, I like Rebel Rocker a lot, man. That's that. That's one of my favorites. Too. Yeah, I listened to that one as well. Yeah, yeah. I listened. To, I listened to everything that was right there. Yeah, we so, we we have fun. Yeah, who's your principal songwriter? Um, actually, I would say the three of us. Me, you, me, you, and Steve. Yeah. I. I come up with a vocal idea, write down some words, and then and those Steve guys did the music. music. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I think I, except for Gone Full Circle, mm-hmm. my, see, which X was that? The first, second X. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> second ex-wife wrote a poem, wanted us to write music to it. Okay. And uh, give it to Steve. He did the music. We rearranged everything a little bit. She wanted it to be Molly Hatchet style. Right, right. It came out ballad style. As a matter of fact, it's a song we're going to do later. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I don't know if we should do it later. I mean, we're talking about it. Let's, but tell, us a little, tell us more about the song, and then we'll see if it's time to play it now. Well, I, I, read, it, I read it one way. Julie, my girlfriend, reads it another way. So it's all in your head on how you want to read it. Is it this girl getting dissed 
and about you being on the road and, mm-hmm. or is it about your life about being on the road? Right. So you can either take it one way or this is the way I live. And this is like the way she's seeing it is how you're screwing her mm-hmm. over for right. being gone on the road all the time. Right, right, right. But, mm-hmm. you know, it, the main thing in it is never go straight. Always go forward. Never hit a stop sign twice. Right. Just roll down the road. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's a gutsy approach, especially since you let your girlfriend read a poem that was written by your ex-wife. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, I had to have her tell me what it meant. That's very, very scary. Uh, yeah. uh, thir- uh, 12, 13 years we've been together and knock on wood, not one fight yet. Right. Well, that's But good. we're not that's married. Good. So that fixes well, all that, the problems yeah. right there. <laughs> that's it. That's it. So you wrote that song. Uh, so then, then who actually put the music to that poem? Um, Steve Kelly, my Steve, lead and slide yeah. player. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, he's right. the one that actually formed the band with me back in the beginning of time. Right. 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 Seems like. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I can't think of a better segue. We talked about the song. Everybody knows what it means. Yeah. You know? I think it's a perfect time. I, I think, think uh, I think we need to take a break. We'll and just let take a little song. break and yeah. uh, we'll be right back. Sounds good. You're listening to the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. Hi, I'm Rick Anthony. I'd like to thank my radio brothers, Ray the Roadie and Hollywood Mike, for allowing me to tell you about my podcast, the Someone You Should Know Podcast. We spotlight musicians, authors, and interesting people, and we like to say we're making a difference one artist at a time. The podcast is heard twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays, and you can check it out on your favorite streaming platforms and on the web at someoneyoushouldknowpodcast.com. That's the Someone You Should Know Podcast with me, Rick Anthony. Making a difference, one artist at a time. Hey, it's Ray and Mike, and we got some great information for you. Yeah, we just wanted to remind you about the fundraiser for the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66, which is taking place on October 27th at the Renaissance Center in downtown Joliet. You'll be able to get tickets at Cadillac Groove Shows. Uh, If you see Mike or myself somewhere, we'll have tickets. You can get them at the museum. Uh, They're only $5. Also, at CadillacGroove.com, you will be able to to purchase them online as well. Very good. They're going to cost you five dollars a ticket there's going to be a ten dollar cover charge to get in the day of the event and for your ten dollars we will give you two more additional tickets as well as some cadillac groove swag and the lucky grand prize winner will win the band cadillac groove and winner must be present to win and so remember that and cadillac groove will play for whatever event it is that you would like for us to play for you know conditions do apply that's true we do so have to get out that. there and get your tickets right away <laughs> I'm Christy from Crime Cave Podcast. I've had a huge interest in true crime since my days of watching marathons of Snapped back in the mid-90s. I needed an outlet to talk about the cases that have haunted me for a very long time. With each episode under 20 minutes, I shine a light on some of the most bizarre cases in the last 50 years. Join me in the Crime Cave. And for the first time this evening, Shooter. I 
we've got the crew set Traveling across the land Going to the next show Another one night stand Now we've gone full circle Ain't never turning back Ain't no way So they say Never go straight, go forward Never hear the stop sign twice We're gonna go full circle Very nice. Excellent. See, I, I knew you guys do it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a willy. He can do anything. <laughs> That's why. I, oh, that was great. That was fantastic. I absolutely love that song. You know, I, I know your, your genre is Southern rock, but you know, that one, that one had a touch of Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, mm-hmm. that's another band, another story. Oh, no. really? <laughs> uh, we were supposed to tour with Gordon Lightfoot. No kidding. Yeah. Back in the seventies, back right. in one of my other bands. And, uh, my guitar player got caught doing something he wasn't supposed to. Okay. Not me. Wasn't me. <laughs> wasn't you? <laughs> Not this time. No, because you would no, because because when <laughs> that's the, this that, band at another cause time. Because I, I wouldn't have got caught. Yeah, yeah, but you would have also probably only been about seven years old. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we we're supposed to tour Gordon Lightfoot, and uh, it got thrown to the wayside. I was playing with a band called Honey Creek. Okay, which my bass player now, Rick Prather, right. Was in that band with me back in seventy four. Oh wow! Okay, so that's how far we go back. So yeah. every so everything's kind of come full circle. <laughs> yeah, uh, see what I did, yeah, see what I did there. Circle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, interesting. You are the Segway man. <laughs> I am. I am. So so you know you mentioned that the song was about you know possibly your life on the road and the whole bit. You guys have opened up for some pretty cool acts. I oh mean, yeah, be, owning a construction company and a former teamster and doing all that stuff. How the heck did you find time to listen? You opened up for Marshall Tucker, I think you said. Oh, yeah. done. Yeah, several shows of Marshall Tucker. I've yeah. been, I, I think, uh, I've got to hang with all the bands, Ants, but Ronnie. Uh, I've got to sing on stage with Doug Gray. Wow. Charlie Daniels. My kids grew up with Charlie Daniels. Your kids grew up with Charlie Daniels. Got pictures of them sitting on his lap all backstage. Wow. Uh, just, uh, yeah. Uh, man, when you get to, yeah, um, open up with the real Molly Hatchet, with right, Danny right. Joe. Yeah, right, right. So I was blessed to be able to do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, back in the back, back when I joined the band in 1990, I mean, it was just everybody, you know, worked during the week and Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday, you know, bars would just have bands and we would be just partying and out all night, you know, just playing. Yeah, so. right. Yeah. Yeah, right. we, uh, Edgar Winter, Fog Hat, yeah, uh, Fog Ted Hat, Nugent, John, George Thorogood, so uh, Thirty Eight Special. When I mean, was some of this stuff recent, or was all this stuff kind this of? This is just during our career. Okay, throughout the time. Throughout the time, sure. and 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 what have you participated in then, as far as opening I, up for somebody? I life? was in all those shows. You were at, so all those shows. Wow. Yeah. So I met Gr back in nineteen ninety. We were both two bands in DeKalb. I was in a different band. Okay. And uh, we both played at this big bar in DeKalb called Otto's. Oh, and, I know where uh, Otto's is. Yeah, or it used yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah, or not used there to be. Right, right, right. But yeah, we played there, and JR would always come out and see my band, and I knew who he was, and he would talk to me after I'm done playing. He kept saying, I'm going to get you in my band one of these days. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he just kept coming out, and then, I don't know, one night we were just party in one night after a show after a show i did and this guy we went over to this guy's house and he probably had like 50 people there he had a small house and uh back then gr used to i'm gonna tell the story oh no, no i no, gotta no. tell it oh, man no, no we gotta hear it and then yep, uh, i got gotta hear too it. late now we back, gotta then, hear it. back then gr used to wear spurs on his boots you know and uh he used to, <laughs> he used, to dress, he used to dress up quite a bit <laughs> And uh, so we're at this guy's house and Jared's coming out of the bathroom, long hallway. And I'm at the end of the hallway talking to someone. Jared's walking down the hallway and he turns to talk to me and his spurs get caught in the carpet. 
And all I see is him just going backwards. <laughs> and he took out this guy's coffee table, glass coffee table. Ooh. I mean, just smashed it to bits. And I just, it took me like five seconds after I saw he was okay. And I just, I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, you want me to be your guitar player, huh? You know, I was going to say, he's laughing at you and you, he's, he's wanting to be in the band. And he's laughing at you. <laughs> the, the bad part about it is that guy said he would never have us at his yeah, house again. Yeah. yeah. And uh, was following it three, week, was it three went, months later, yeah. three months later, I fall through his Christmas tree. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> but I did quit wearing my spurs. Yeah. yeah, probably a good idea. How much whiskey was involved? A lot. Oh, man. <laughs> a lot. Oh, man. So well, Jack, it wasn't so much the yeah. spurs fault. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, Jack's, Jack Daniels sponsored us for a little bit. Oh, God, so, yeah. Yeah. So we Whether had they to, realized it or not, Jack Daniels was sponsoring oh, yeah. you for oh, a little yeah, bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, if you go to uh, Shooter Band USA and look at our videos and stuff, yep. Jack Daniels had sponsored my birthday party at Otto's. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they thought it would be cool for me to ride my Harley. Oh, in. that's another great story. Oh, boy. So I ride up the <laughs> handicap ramp. I level off. I start going down the other handicap ramp to the stage. Right. My bike catches on fire. Oh, gee. What? The <laughs> you place could, you, has like a thousand people in it. You couldn't have planned it. It was just. Wow. Smoke everywhere. Smoke everywhere. I mean, it looked like it was planned. It looked like, you know, oh, those guys put a fog bomb in the bike or something, yeah. you know, but it wasn't. I mean, it was on fire. <laughs> so was this before or after the Great White Fire? <laughs> no, this was way before. Oh, was this was okay. yeah, early 90s. Yeah. Well, I, I was I, I was at that great. Well, that's I don't want to relive that. But yeah. so a, a motorcycle you've put thousands of miles on just all of a sudden just decides, you know, I'm going to yep. watch. I'm going to mess with these guys and I'm going to catch on fire now. Right. Right now, <laughs> I lost my battery strap and I had a bungee strap on it and I knew it was going to get videoed. So I took the bungee strap off, slid forward. The positive cable hit against the frame, started smoking the electrical system. Oh, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> These guys keep. We can, we're just playing. We just kept, kept playing. playing. I yeah. rode up, yeah. put my kickstand down. Road crew came over, jerked the wires out. Roll the bike out of the back. I walked around, went up on stage and started Just singing. like it was planned. Oh, all because, yeah. all, Never all dropped be, a lick. And all Jeez. because you didn't want to see the bungee, you know. <laughs> yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. You, yeah. Know, yeah. You, know, you know, vanity is the devil's favorite sin. There right? you go. Was that a real Harley <laughs> or an AMF? <laughs> uh, let's see. Was that my 73 or 78? I don't know. Wow. I've had so many Harley Davidsons, mm. uh, 54s, 57s, 48s. Wow. I've, I, I don't think there's a type of Harley I haven't at the one time in my life owned or rode. Right, right. Wow. So, so how did you end up getting all of these gigs? You know, how I mean, how do you get a phone? How do you get a phone call? Hey, come and open up for, you know, Charlie Daniels Just, or whatever. Go ahead. I don't know. Well, I was going to say, some, I mean, some bars, <laughs> like probably about four shows that I played with you were at Otto's. So the guy at Otto's loved our band. Yeah. And oh, yeah. whenever, yeah, that was our whenever Ax did. would come into town, he would say, hey, you guys want to do, be the opening act for him? Because he loved us. He thought we'd be a great opening act for him. So, so it's, you know, so somebody comes into town and, hey, we're going to get it. And he was responsible for getting an opening act. Didn't matter who it was. And so. Yeah, I don't so know anybody else that wanted. It. Actually, I think we did. We did yeah. every headlining yeah. show there yeah. was at Otto's. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to have a friend like that. Yeah, oh, yeah, for oh, sure. We had our own private bar there, our own private yeah, green the, room, whether we were playing or not. They would always have a cooler full, two cases of beer, and unfortunately for us, they'd have a fifth of Jack Daniels for yeah, GR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. by the end of the yeah. night, he was, uh, yeah, he was pretty animated on stage. All right. So did you do all this at Otto's, or did you tour with some of these bands, too? Oh, no. Not all of them was Otto's. Martha right. Tucker was uh, the Cactus Rose. Cactus in Rose up okay. in Rockford, an old, okay. old club up there. Yeah. Um, festivals with 38 specials. Right, and, right, right. Uh, uh, just festivals, opening act for festivals. And sure. uh, got to know the guys. Jimmy Van Zant yeah. was releasing his first album. Mm. And of course, we're the local Southern rock boys. Right. And so we opened up for him. That's how I met Jimmy. I had to actually do their last set because Jimmy was so jacked up. He <laughs> couldn't talk or walk. And they were basically a Skinner tribute band is all they yeah, pretty right. much did. So right. I went Fit and did, right the third, yeah, yeah. did the third set for Jimmy Van Zandt. So was, wow. was it Jimmy's band or was it 38 Special? 
was Jimmy's band. It was Jimmy's Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy the Cousins. It was Jim, Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. That's right, it was. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you were right. They were doing just a lot of Leonard Skinner and stuff yeah. like that. So what's the rest of the list? You said you said Molly Hatchet and you got Van Zant and 38 Special and what did you, and you opened it for Charlie Daniels? Oh um, yeah. yeah. I opened up for Charlie Daniels. This was before Shooter. Sure, sure, sure. But uh yeah, I met Charlie, did the reflections tour with him. Okay. In seventy seven or six yeah, yeah, during yeah. that tour. It, actually, he's the one that got me drinking Jack Daniels. Mm. There's a shocker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine if you toured with Willie Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Probably yeah. wouldn't remember much of that. Yeah. yeah. I sure. have a hard enough time remembering already. Right. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We've had a lot of great stuff going on for us. I mean, I, I, I'm turning down shows. I, we just can't, yeah. there's not enough time. You know, in, there, there's got to be a reason for that. You know, there's, you know, there's a, you know, some people will say, you know, the last thing we need is another Southern rock band or the last thing we need is another classic rock band or, or whatever. But when you do that stuff extremely well, yeah, exactly. And you can tell that it's part of your soul, part right. of your bones and you do it that good. Yeah. I mean, there's no, to me, there's nothing that beats that. I mean, that just that driving sound and, yeah. and everything. Yeah. The tribute bands are what's killing me. Yeah. yeah? Oh, tell me about that. Can't stand them. Because because there is a de- there is a debate on this podcast all the time about tribute bands. You love them or you hate them. There's yeah. no in between. And most of the time, people are like, "Oh yeah, we love them." But I would love to hear the perspective of someone that's being killed by them. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's just that if you have to be a tribute band to be able to get out and play, you learn twenty songs. You go do the same twenty songs. You get paid a stupid amount of money for an hour and a half. And you got people like us that can play every song you're playing plus a hundred more and get a quarter of the money and do four hours. Hmm. Almost. Yeah. yeah. You can That's say what that. pisses this, you off. This is a podcast. So you can say that. Well, well yeah. It just, it just, and especially all the Skinner tribute bands. Yeah. I, I love Skinner, but when the last guy passed away, Skinner's been a tribute band since the accident. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that, right? So living off Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. You know? Hey, what's the thing that's going on? There's something that's going on right now. Um, the guys from um, the Guess Who. So the original leads, or the original, I believe, lead singer, one of the founders of the Guess Who is suing the current Guess Who. There, yeah. there is there is literally a band touring as the Guess Who yeah. right now. I've seen that. Not, I was wondering, I thought they were like not dead. One, not one original yeah, member right, of exactly. the band. I've yeah. seen that the other day. And and many of the original members are still around, but yeah. Dirk is not into Guess Who anymore. So, yeah. so he's done something that nobody's ever done. I was just reading the article. Um, he's got all of the, he's got all of the rights to their music. He's got all of the rights to the catalog. Oh, wow. They've never sold the rights to the catalog. So when he decided that, well, I'm going to sue these band, this, this band, they're not going to be allowed to play anything that I wrote. Yeah. Or that he wrote, not I wrote, but you know, yeah. but those are all of the guess who hits. And he's like, who's going to want to go see a Guess Who tribute band? Yeah, right. They're exactly. They're not playing all exactly. of the hits. Yeah. But, but what he didn't realize that that did is by filing th- this lawsuit, what it also did is it said, OK, you know, uh, this company can't use our song for their commercial. or This, uh, yeah. this, this movie company can't yeah. use one of our songs in the movie. So he's kind of taking a little bit of money out of his own pocket. Ah. But at the same time, he's like, I'm not going to have somebody go up there and bastardize the music that I wrote. I'm sure. Like, no, especially with a bunch of guys yeah. who are just making money off of a name and something that I created. Yeah. yeah, there's I not one that. original member. Yeah. I mean, it'd be different, I guess, if you know, so you know, God forbid, a guy in a band dies and they replace him. Yeah, and, you sure. know, a guy in a band dies and they replace him, right? And then you got some original well, members. That left happens all the time. Yeah. It, that happens yeah. all the time. Yep. But these guys are all still alive. And, yeah. yeah, and you've got you've got some guys touring as the guess who. Wow, I, I, I did guess, not know that. I guess I, I mean that literally that's hot in the news right now. I literally read that I think on Monday. They should yeah. tour with Foreigner. Yeah. There's, there's no original <laughs> yeah, member yeah. in Foreigner either. Well, yeah, that, that's I, true. That's I'm true. glad this doesn't come out till like August because I can still play till then. Because after they hear me dissing the tribute fans, they're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> fuck him. <Yeah. laughs> no, but you know, you know, you know what? The, the funny thing is, a lot of bands that are, that call themselves a tribute band, they they just think it's so funny. They're like, yeah, we know. I mean, we're, we're just, we know we're not, we're not them. We're just having fun and people are coming in and seeing us. Yeah. Right? They're making buttloads of money. Yeah. They've got, you know, some tribute bands like to play to the back and tracks and stuff and they don't even hide it. You know, you know, we're, you know, we don't, we're four guys, but you know, Hey, we don't have a piano player. 
But yeah. That's okay because it's recorded. Or the and, horns. Yeah. And they don't care. And they yeah. don't care. People love the music and they come out and we're getting paid and we're having yeah. a good time and it's yeah. a party and they're they're having a blast doing it. <laughs> but but I mean, you guys, you, you guys, uh, I mean, we can't even call you a cover band because I mean, you've got a lot of your own original music. I mean, yeah, you play covers and stuff. Uh, yeah. what, what's your show? Is it uh, more covers and original music? What the, like? What's yeah, the I would percentage? definitely say more covers nowadays mm. for sure. Yeah. 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 We, uh, well, with the two new guys, it's hard bringing it in, getting the feel of the original music. Mm. And um, the, the Southern rock is what I live and breathe, you know. So mm. I mean, all of our shows consist of mainly, I'd say, 90 percent, 95 percent. Skinner, Molly Hatchet, mm-hmm. 38 Special, ZZ Top. Yep, right. Marshall Tucker. Marshall, Marshall Tucker. Marshall Tucker, right. Um, Blackfoot. I was yeah. going to say you got to have Blackfoot. Oh, yeah. Blackfoot. Um, uh, then there's just so many we've dropped because you've only got three hours or four hours to play, so you can't do them all. Right, right. You know, so, and I can only handle Kenny turning that damn page so many times. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Kenny, but you suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, he also, like you said, he charts everything. So he charts everything, yeah. yeah. So, uh, we've been together so long. We, you know, somebody come up and say, can you do this song? Yeah. And I look at Steve, look at Willie. Don't even have to talk. Just Don't even have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> right. But now I can't do that no more. Yeah. And I can't feel the crowd. And if we're doing this set and I feel like I need to be over in this set, mm-hmm. I can't just throw it in there and groove right in. Right. I got to wait for him to turn the page. So Remind you really got to follow your uh, set list. I have to follow my set list. I haven't done that in my entire life. <laughs> it's just to remember what I do know, what I do, what I do know, because if I don't have a set list, I have no freaking idea what I'm playing. Right. You know, so. Yeah. But yeah. and we started throwing in some Texas red dirt music, too. So sure. I'm trying to add a little bit of that. I brought that up from Texas. I love cross Canadian ragweed and I and love I love Josh Abbott and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm trying to sneak a little bit of that in. We just yeah. got uh, I got my red rocket TV shirt on today. Uh Rebel TV out of Jacksonville, Florida, just started airing our videos. Oh, nice. Nice. So, oh, awesome. Yeah. So yeah. we're being aired in um, 128 countries and 10 million followers on that wow. TV station. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think I've ever heard anybody mention cross Canadian ragweed before. Ever. Probably not. Yeah. I tried yeah. smoking at one time. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. really <laughs> not good. Uh, yeah. I think, I think I might be the only person I know that actually knows that that band is. Yeah, I, good band. I've, 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 I've mentioned that band. I've mentioned that band to so many people so many times. They're like, who? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they all, they all know one song. They, they, if, if they've never heard of a band, they know of one song. You take, guess which one it is. I don't know. We do uh cry lonely and Alabama. And then we do Stony LaRue, them Oklahoma from Breakdown. Oklahoma, the 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 joy oh, oh, there you wrong. go. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, that'd be the one. That's <laughs> one I want to yeah, bring in. Yeah. That's one I want to bring in. And I'm trying to get my own band to, to, to yeah, do that one. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to do a show together. <laughs> well, you know, that sounds like a good idea. I'll give you my business card. We'll have to get these guys on our show with the Roxy. That's right. Yeah. That would be a hell <laughs> of a awesome, show. Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll talk to you about that afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I also I also own a production company too. So I've got every I got a PA big enough for fifty people to five thousand people. Excellent. Nice. And Excellent. lights. So man. any chance of being able to get, uh, get one more song out of you? Probably uh, not. Uh, <laughs> right. it, it took everything I had to talk him into that. All right. I got him one. Like, nope. Nope, nope. I know how guitar players are. It's not my guitar. And, right, you know. right. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if we come back again, if you want us back again, because we got a lot more lies to tell you. My, oh, also, if you want to go to Amazon, you can get The Adventures of Shooter on paperback. Really? Yeah. Not, my, not the band. Not the band, myself. Personal, Yourself. Kind of mini autobiography of me growing up. When did you write that? My girlfriend's brother is a, an established author. Okay. Okay. And um, he started running to meeting me at family stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, Julie told him about me and he goes, man, you need to have a book. And I go, well, that's cool. So I would write down a bunch of stuff, send it to him. And right. He'd figure it out. And it, it, it's kind of cool. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it's very it's, cool. Uh, it's kind of course like, cool. Uh, I don't know. It's like. Truths and half truths to yeah. to to make it worth reading, right? 
But right, uh, right. yeah, the uh, intro part of it is really freaking. I mean, cool. sometimes sometimes you got to lie for entertainment reasons. Hey, I don't think I've ever told the truth at <laughs> one time on stage. I've heard many different versions of JR's truth. Oh yeah, 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 and every one of them's true. <laughs> That's right. In your mind, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm a legend in my own mind. There you go. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. But yeah, this is uh, this has been awesome, man. This yeah. is a blast. I was worried about coming here, but I knew Willie wouldn't shut up. So I do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, I'm always a talker. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what do you guys have coming up? I know you got to actually, I might have this for you right here someplace. I think uh, the link that was sent over to me. You got see, the shooterband.com. Yeah. We've got um, starting mid August. We've got Saturday, August 17th at Jamie's outpost. I know where that is. I know oh, where yeah, we're, there's, we're actually Saturday. there's Saturday too. Yeah. 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 Where there's Saturday. And you get uh, August 24th, Shooter Lawman's McParty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a big fundraiser. Motorcycle club, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Big fundraiser. We do that. I think this is our seventh year. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah, they yeah. keep having us back, which is August great. 31st, you were at uh, Boar's Nest. Oh, great place. Where's, where's Boar's Nest? It's in Darien, Darien, right on the border by Clinton, Wisconsin. You can't miss it. It's got a... General Dar- Lee, Darien? Set, Darien, Wisconsin. General oh, Lee Dar- is on top oh, Darien, of the building. Was, Darien, Wisconsin. I was thinking yeah. Darien right down the... Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, Darien, yeah. Wisconsin. Okay, all right. And then you got... Uh, oh, Lee's Place. I love Lee's Place. That's yeah, on yeah, September, September 2nd. Second. Over there by Lake Holiday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we've, great place. We've played there so many times. Man, I absolutely love that place. When yeah. the people come up with, the, with the boats and the yeah, bit yeah, and just yeah. kind of get out. And that, that's a great place. That's kind of our home, home yeah, bar. Yeah, that's a great place. I, I love playing Lee's. I need, we need to get back there. We didn't play there last summer because we just got booked up so fast. That's a good place. Yeah. And you're at Dockside's on September 14th, September 28th. You're back at Boar's Nest, and October 5th, the Burgoo, the Burgoo oh, Fest, Burgoo Fest, Fest, Fest in Utica. Utica. Yeah, yeah, there's like 50,000 people at that yeah. thing. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great time. That's a great time. You guys got some good places you're coming up. Yeah. Well, anybody interested, they can go to shooterband.com and our calendar's right there, and it's full through December. Yeah. Right. So we ain't hard to find. No, no. You're on all. Facebook too. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Just a shooter on Facebook. Yeah. But they're, yeah, that, that's kind of a hard thing too, because I actually own the name shooter. Okay. And I got a hundred shooter bands are popping up now. I feel like Ronnie Van Zant. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're just stealing my name. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, they're probably they're getting around some kind of way. It's you know it's not it's not shooter band or it's shooter dash band or it's shooter. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah something well, like the that. last band that tried that uh, when full it was after Full Circle came out was from England, and they okay. wanted to release a CD or album under the name of Shooter. Right. I right. said, sure. Send me ten grand. Yeah, <laughs> they did. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> really? So if that don't mean I own that name, I don't know what the hell does. Well, wow. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It, it, it's it's so funny. It brings up something else. I guess read it today. There is a wedding band. They're, they describe they describe themselves as a wedding band, meaning they're playing corporate parties. Yeah. Apparently, they've played two parties at the White House, right? But they're they're a wedding band, right? You're or a banquet band. Yeah. Their name is Jelly Roll. Oh, really? And so now you've uh, got, now you've got Jelly Roll, yeah. multi million, yeah. you know, multi platinum recording artist, right? Who's going by Jelly Roll? Little local community festival band or whatever has sued Jelly Roll. Oh my god! <laughs> and, I, and I'm interested to see how that's going to play. Oh, yeah, because really. it's one thing when you got a guy who's backed by millions of corporate yeah, dollars right. going after you know getting a cease and desist out to a to a local band, right? But now you've got some local. You know, local they must have the name trademarked. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Exa- exactly what it is. So it's like, what's Jelly Roll going to do? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jeez. yeah, yeah. That'll be interesting. That's to see crazy. That. That'll be interesting to see the outcome of that one. I don't it's think I'm going to make any millions off of it. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I'd better be happy with my ten grand and walk. <laughs> right, 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 right. Excellent. Well, that I better. I'm gonna go trademark Mike and the Stillmasters. Right there, now. you go. You better. You, you actually, got, actually, yeah. it is. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. but I, but I don't think anybody's gonna be knocking on my door to name something Mike and the Stillmasters. No, I mean, <laughs> what happens if it's like Joe and the Stillmasters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, technically, Stillmasters is kind of made up, but you know. You could be a master of a still. Oh, you there can. you go. Yeah. I'm sure there was a lot of them I'm back sure in the day. Was. Yep. There think, maybe I, still. I think I went out with a girl named that. Named Still Master? <laughs> still Master. Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. yeah. She That's was a master day. at laying still. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yikes. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. And, See, on, and I, on that note. Yeah. 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 I'll be in Utica Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. where, where, where is it? Which one are you looking for? There, there you go. go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, All righty, guys. Well, thanks for coming out. This was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Look forward to seeing you out uh, playing somewhere soon. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. We were supposed to play at the Forge, but they never called us back. Well, you know, because you guys are in heavy metal. There's a lot of heavy metal oh, there? stuff over there. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah they filter in a few turned, other yeah, bands though, yeah, but just yeah. primarily, yeah. It's turned into a it's turned into a pretty uh, pretty heavy metal crowd over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, but right. don't take it personal. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Sure, got a look at kills. Get it over and kill me. Put me out of this misery. See running through me. She's got that sexy look in her eyes. Says maybe later. Then she turns and says, Don't fall. I ain't in love with danger. Don't fall in love. Don't fall in love. So many other guys have tried and crumbled. Someone's got a band crush. Someone's got a band <laughs> crush. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love them. I, I've been listening to their music. When you sent that to me today, yeah. I always have something playing in the office or whatever. I've been listening to them all day. Mm-hmm. Man, they are a lot of fun. Yeah. And and uh, some of their stuff, I think, is better than some of the bands that they've played with. I mean, you got to listen to that stuff. I mean, yeah. it, it was it is just some it's hard driving. It's heavier than what you what you'd think. Mm hmm. But you can dance to it. I mean, no. you, yeah. I mean, there's some there's some two stepping songs on this stuff with rock and guitars. It sounds fantastic. It's, it's cool when music. you come across something like that. Yeah, you know, where you yeah. listen to it, like you think, "Wow, this is really great." Yeah, you know, there's been a, there's been a number of uh, original bands we've had on here, and when I listened to their stuff, I was like, "Wow, right, <laughs> right." Know? It's like I'm hooked. Right, I'll be mm-hmm. listening to them uh, when I work out. There you go. Tomorrow. Put that on my playlist. Yeah, that's right. You better work out and That's get right. a little, little flabby there. I, I am. Saying, yeah, I am. I it's am. just winter weight. Yeah. That's what it is. That's all. Yeah. Plus, you've been haven't been playing much. I, I know. Yeah. So, but but that's all about the change this uh, coming weekend. That's right. It's all the over. Flo- the floodgates are about to open. That's right. So. <laughs> all righty then. Thanks to everybody for listening every week, and look for us every Tuesday for another exciting episode of the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast. See you next week. Hey, everybody, it's Ray the Roadie. And this is Hollywood Mike of the Rock and Roll Chicago Podcast. If you've been enjoying our weekly program, we have great news for you. Just tune in to Road to Rock Radio on Mondays at 7 p.m. Central Time, and you can hear a rebroadcast of one of our past episodes. Then again on Thursdays at 7 p.m., you can hear our most current episode brought to you by the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66. So go to roadtorock.org, scroll down, and click on Radio Station. That'll bring you to the Road to Rock Radio, a station committed in Entirely to the great music from Illinois, from Chicago blues born on Maxwell Street to today's rock and roll and everything in between. 24-7, all music with its roots in Illinois. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast is edited by Paul Martin. Theme song courtesy of m and Rush. The Rock and Roll Chicago podcast does not own the rights to any of the music heard on the show. The music is used to promote the guests that are featured. Rock and roll, Chicago.